Now that we've got the first two out of the way, it's time we dove into some other ways in which the rate of reaction can be influenced. The first of these is temperature. Remember when we said that particles must have a certain amount of energy, known as the activation energy, to collide successfully? Well, it's time you found out where that energy comes from. Recall that temperature is merely a measure of how much heat energy a system possesses. And that heat energy, like all forms of energy, doesn't have to stay heat energy forever. In fact, the higher the temperature of a reaction, the more heat energy the particles possess. Therefore, the more likely they are to have enough energy to produce a successful collision. Therefore, the higher the temperature of a reaction, the greater the rate of reaction tends to be. But the virtue of temperature doesn't stop there. We mentioned that heat energy can be transformed into other types of energy. In fact, heat energy often turns into kinetic energy. Increasing the temperature of a reaction causes the particles to move around in space faster and therefore makes them more likely to bang into each other. This increases the chance of reactions occurring and therefore increases the rate of reaction. The presence of a catalyst is maybe the trickiest of these changes that can affect a rate of reaction. What a catalyst does is provide an alternative pathway for the reaction to occur on, one with a lower activation energy. The catalyst itself is not part of the reaction and does not get used up, but it can do a whole bunch of good work while it's around. Because the alternative pathway requires less activation energy, there will be a higher proportion of particles with the required activation energy to meet it. If you have trouble understanding this, don't worry, it's a super tricky concept, and some kind of analogy might be helpful. Imagine the reactants turning into the products is a bit like you needing to travel from Wellington to Auckland, and the total enthalpy change is a bit like the total distance that you travel, or for you physicists out there, displacement. Bear with me here. Now think about the difference between driving all the way up there and just taking a plane. They both cover the same distance, but one way is much faster than the other. Do you see how this makes sense? It makes sense for reactions too. So if you see the word catalyst in your exam and can't figure it out, think about airplanes. And remember that all a catalyst is, is an alternative route. 